This is a relay module and I absolutely love these things because they have literally saved me hundreds of hours using some automated testing while building the relay computer. And once the relay computer got to the point where it could run code, they also made for a great way to quickly and accurately load programs into memory. And along the way, I received a few questions about these relay modules. Everything from how do they work, right through to, well, why do I need a relay module when I already have a microcontroller? These relay modules are driven by a microcontroller, and the one that I use and abuse is this Elegoo Arduino compatible Mega 2560. And I went with this board because it has the highest number of input output pins, which is important since I want to be able to test the large number of control, data, and address lines on the relay computer. So I'll do a quick example by using the Arduino development environment to create and upload a simple clock that cycles pin 8 between high and low, which in the real world translates to 5 volts when high and 0 volts when low. And when we connect the ground and then pin 8 to an LED plus a resistor, we can see these clock pulses in action. Now, I also have this 5 volt relay set up here, and we can try to drive it from the same pin like so. And it seems to be working, but as the saying goes, just because we can doesn't mean that we should. Although these pins output 5 volts, we also have to be very mindful of the current that this is drawing from the microcontroller. And a quick look at the datasheet for this microcontroller shows us that the current draw for each pin is a maximum of 40 milliamps. So now we can find out how much current this guy draws by referring to the datasheet, which in this case is presented in watts. We can then find the current by using Watt's law to calculate the amperage and then multiply that by a thousand to give us the value as milliamps. So you could probably get away with driving just this relay by itself, but there's a couple of extra details to consider. The first is that in the relay computer, many relays are driving other relays and this would easily take us over that 40 milliamp limit. And the second thing to consider is that on the microcontroller, we can see that there's also a maximum current draw for groups of pins as well. And this takes us to our relay modules because they allow a low power microcontroller to control high power circuits. So let's take a look at how they do that. This is the relay module board that is dominated by these eight single pole double throw relays across the top. And on the bottom, we have these input pins that are driven by the microcontroller. And in the middle is the circuitry that allows the low current input signals down here to control these relays that are then able to switch much higher currents and voltages. The manufacturer's schematic for this board is a bit of an eye chart, so I've created this simplified version for one of the eight channels. Starting from the left, we have a voltage source feeding an opto-isolator and LED indicator. And this circuit is completed whenever the input line is taken low. On the other side of the isolator, we see a voltage source called JDVCC, which stands for Jumper Defined VCC, which for now is tied to VCC using this jumper on the bottom right of the relay module board, and we'll talk more about this later. Back to our diagram, with the opto isolator now active, it gates JDVCC through to the base of this transistor, which in turn switches on and allows current to flow to ground. And this completes this circuit and activates the relay. So here's the same circuit in breadboard format. We have the opto isolator, the transistor, and a relay that represents one of these relays that are on the relay module. And I've just added this LED to visually show when this relay has been activated. And I've also labeled the bottom rail as VCC 
and then the top rail as JD VCC. And this jumper wire here is acting like this jumper on the relay module, which means that the transistor and relay are all powered using VCC. So let's connect the microcontroller up, starting with the ground and then power, and connect pin 8 to the opto isolator. With this jumper in place, we're still using the power source from the microcontroller to drive everything on this board. And if we were driving all eight of these relays, it would be very stressful on the microcontroller. And this is where this JD or jumper defined VCC comes into play. If we remove the jumper between VCC and JD VCC, we can see that the microcontroller is now just powering the opto isolator and this LED. And then we can connect a separate power supply to the JD VCC rail, which can now provide a higher current to this relay. And from this angle, we can see that the relay side of the circuit is drawing 49 milliamps. But because the circuit is isolated and we're using two separate power sources, the microcontroller only needs to provide 2 or 3 milliamps for the opto isolator and the indicator LED. You may have noticed from the schematic that the relay module is activated when the input is low, which may appear counterintuitive and seems to cause some confusion out there as to why this would be the case. One reason for this is to avoid any unintentional relay activations during the startup of the microcontroller when the pins are not fully initialized. Now, you can purchase relay modules that can be set up for active high operations, but I found these to be a bit more expensive. And I think the easiest thing to do is to create new definitions for high and low in your code. For example, I've defined relay module high as low, and then relay module low as high. And then anywhere I'm using the relay modules, I just substitute the new definitions of high and low. I've had an absolute blast designing and building a homebrew relay computer, and being able to streamline the testing process with these relay modules has made it that much more enjoyable. Now, some would argue that using a modern microcontroller in the process is somehow cheating, but let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll leave off with this most recent automated testing I'm doing on the front panel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.